The Future of KSL Documentation, Deaf and Hearing Partnerships at Kenyon Universities. Hello, I am Evans Burachani, and this is my sign name. I'm from Kenya, and I teach in a school for deaf students. I also work in sign linguistics research in a collaboration with Leiden University in the Netherlands. Hello, my name is Margaret Odiambo. This is my sign name. I'm from Kenya, and my affiliation is with KISE, that is the Kenya Institute of Special Education. Hello, my name is Hope Morgan, and this is my sign name. Also this one. And I'm a sign language linguist who works here at Leiden University. Though I'm not Dutch, I'm an, a hearing American. This presentation will address sign language documentation in Kenya, and that's the sign for Kenya. So what are the challenges for language documentation? What is the way forward to set up a program that would include deaf signers and linguists, those linguists often being hearing? And also involves universities to achieve long-term sustainability for KSL documentation. What's the current situation in Kenya? Well, there are actually many positive aspects to acknowledge about KSL and the deaf community in Kenya. First, KSL is explicitly named in the Kenyan constitution as a recognized language of Kenya. The government also recognizes KSL as an official language of teaching and examination in schools. And indeed, there are many deaf schools around the country. Because of these schools, deaf children therefore have access to language, to basic education, and opportunities for social development and social interaction. In Kenya, deaf adults comprise a large and active deaf community of people who feel empowered to freely express themselves. Deaf organizations are there as well, in particular, the Kenyan National Association of the Deaf, KNAD. Also, compared to other African countries, research on the sign language of Kenya has had a lot of publications and dictionaries. And something that I've noticed over time is that the hearing community in Kenya has an increasingly more positive attitude towards sign language and the deaf community in general, including a willingness to, to use sign language.
And there are even more things that I haven't mentioned here. But despite all of these supports for a thriving national sign language in Kenya, there still isn't an active national documentation project for KSL. There are also some challenges in regard to language documentation. First, in the past, research was not always easily available to the deaf community. I mean, up until today. Second, there has been a lack of opportunities for deaf people to become trained. And this includes even the Kenya Sign Language Research Project itself. Also, in some institutions for the deaf, there is a lack of respect about KSL. Instead, prescriptivist views dominate. That is, that there are right and wrong ways to sign, and little tolerance for natural language variation. Indeed, some have a preference for signed English rather than Kenyan Sign Language. So our question is how to develop a program of KSL Sign Language documentation that involves deaf researchers and the deaf community and is sustainable over the long term. Some solutions are the following. First, set up a university program for sign language linguistics and language documentation training. Second, assert existing ethical standards that say sign language linguists should involve the deaf community. For example, we can refer to the agreement between the Sign Language Linguistics Society and the World Federation of the Deaf. Third, invite foreign linguists to help train Kenyans in sign language linguistics. And fourth, the idea of having uh, a deaf study center within a university. This can create a place for deaf students it can also be a connection to the linguistics department at the university and the language documentation work and connect to education and interpreting programs at the university as well. So why are we focusing on universities in Kenya? First, there are current demands from multiple groups for better training and education. Deaf Kenyans are now asking for more higher education opportunities and to get university degrees. Both deaf and hearing people, interpreters, want interpreter training to be more professional and to include certification. And another group, are hearing people who are increasingly wanting to learn KSL. So what do all these have in common? They can involve universities. For the second reason, take my own perspective as a foreign linguist. I would like to come to Kenya to be able to work with Kenyan linguists, but there are no deaf sign language linguists in universities to work with. But the best quality linguistics research is when the data is very close to the language community itself. Third, language documentation requires planning for the future, for example, keeping language data for a long time. And where is that best done? In universities, again. Finally, if we consider how funding works, most granting agencies do not usually pay researchers directly.
Instead, funding gets directed to universities after researchers apply for it, and then the universities support those researchers. This is the typical way that it's done around the world. So altogether, these are some ways that universities play an important role in language documentation and linguistics research. So the way forward for KSL documentation involves three things. First, encourage and build good relationships between hearing linguists and the deaf community. Second, create training that is sustainable and builds local capacity in Kenya. And third, public universities are positioned well for training and long-term maintenance of KSL materials through agreements between universities and the National Deaf Organization, KNAD.